Yeah, we, we, we have two more tests we're going around. We're going to say, shit, I give up. Let's just move on to light. <laughs> so, okay, let's start measuring light now. So, uh, and I'm just going to erase all this, and we'll just start looking at how light behaves. By the way, if you want to sound smart, instead of saying a laser, we're going to say a monochromatic light source. And that's what a laser is. By monochromatic, we mean one. Uh, chrome, chroma means color. So single colored light source is exactly what a laser is. Uh, by the way, lasers are also a, a uniquely quantum effect. And that's a, that's a great you know, choice for like an end of your project too. So. Um, and a maser is, is an equivalent thing. Um, anyway. So let's take a laser here, and we're just gonna, you know, and maybe not a laser because it's, we don't want a collimated beam per se. We want something spread out, but anyway. Uh, we're just gonna kind of like shine a continuous stream of light, and even without understanding like the photoelectric effect, you should be able to predict what happens here. And, you know, so we basically just hit, hit the end and we've just changed paths. And finally, the universe gives us a reasonable answer. When this happens, we expect light to behave like waves, and that's exactly what occurs. Good. Light is a wave-like thing. So we don't have to abandon the, the, the wave uh, theory of light as was developed by Maxwell. Uh, because very definitely Maxwell's, uh, I mean, his paper came out in 19, uh, 1868, and this, this, or the quantum revolution didn't happen until the early 1900s. So, check. We finally have some sense in the universe. So, let's just, for the hell of it, let's move on a little bit, and let's now consider what happens if we, instead of having a continuous laser, if we now produce a light source that, and, and let's say we know what the photoelectric effect is, we now pass individual photons through. So I'll write it like this, where we have an individual photon. And so photons, we typically use the letter gamma to notate them. So we're going to pass an individual photon through that double slit screen. We're going to measure the output. And this might not quite be as groundbreaking as the electrons, because it's always been somewhat understood that even if you view photons as individual, like, particles of light, we've always kind of allowed for there to be a wavelength. And remember, just as you recall, the energy of a single photon is, it was experimentally discovered to be, by the photoelectric effect, to be h times its frequency, nu. So, so we now understand that photons are, and, and by the way, that's the same thing as hc over lambda, by, by the, it's the light equation, lambda times nu equals c. Anyway, I think we talked about that last time. Uh, the point is, though, we, we can associate a very definite wavelength with each photon. And so now we have a photon that has a wavelength, so there's something intrinsically wave-like about these particles. And so, you know, surprisingly, but maybe not as surprisingly after those last couple experiments, the result that we get out is, in fact, wave-like behavior. And, you know, it's, it's a little weird because we, we by, by definition, a photon is a particle of light. So it makes sense to, to talk about particles of light as being particle-like, except we now see that particles of light behave like waves. Particles should behave like particles. Waves should behave like particles. We're seeing particles behave like waves. And so if we take that same kind of interpretation for, for the electron, the single electron gun, and apply it, it still kind of works out. That, that individual photon, after we release it, as it moves forward, the only way we can reconcile this is to say that, that individual, the individual packet of, of energy that we call photon spreads out and it goes through both slits at the same time, and that individual electron itself cancels itself out at, at points. 
So again, that's bizarre, but we've, we've seen one instance of that already. But the point is, light, which we've always construed as waves, behaves like waves. But let's do the same thing that we did for electrons. So in this case here, if we're passing individual electrons through, or sorry, individual photons through, let's now put a little detector in front of each of those. So it's photons there, measuring the photons as they pass through the double slit. Same thing again. There's a photon, has some wavelength. It's a double slit thing, detector. And now we have those little beep boop things. So we're now going to, you know, send individual photons through slowly enough that we can clearly differentiate the photons that pass through the top slit versus the photons that pass through the bottom slit. But nothing else has changed. We are still running single electrons through that same setup, except we just check along the way which one, what, what happens. That's what happens. Just like with electrons. By... Measuring what's occurring, we fundamentally change what's occurring. The results are entirely different, and now this is where things kind of come full circle.